All right, there's a lot of content out there about the mouse events. Click, mouse over, mouse out, mouse over, uh, mouse leave, mouse enter, mouse move, and so on. Um, not as much content about the touch events. So we have mouse events. You move your mouse around the screen, you click on things, interact with elements on the web pages. But when you're dealing with a mobile device like a tablet or a phone, you don't have a mouse. So the events that we're going to be working with are touch start, touch end, touch cancel, and touch move. Uh, Alright, so what I have here is a sample web page. I don't have any JavaScript really running on this yet. Uh, inside of here, uh, this is my phone which is connected. I'm using the Chrome developer tools. So I've got Chrome open. I've got the remote devices open. This is my phone. I've connected here. So this is what I'm working with on my phone. You can see I just I touched the screen on my phone and got the JavaScript coming up. Alright, so here's the page that I have right now. As I said, these are the events that we have to work with. There are not events for swipe, swipe left, swipe right, swipe up, swipe down, rotate, pinch, zoom, tap, double tap. Those do not exist. If you want to use some of those, you have to write your own script and you have to use these events to kind of piece that together. So in my web page, I use my typical add event listener. So on my paragraph right here, I'm adding an event listener and I'm going to say touch start. Then I'm going to run a function called f. So in here, function f there it is. It's going to be passed to EV, the event object, the same as a click listener would. This event object is going to tell me things about the touch, where it took place. But one thing that's different with a mouse and with a touch, you can have multi-touch. That means I can touch the screen with one, two, three, four, five fingers. Um, if you're dealing with multiple styluses or other touch devices, you could have multiple points of contact. So the touch events deal with those multiple points of contact. And we can track those multiple points of contact through the event object. So let's say I wanted to write out in, inside of here, touches. This property exists inside of every event object, touch start, touch end, touch move, touch cancel, all of these are going to have access to this property, touches. All right, if I jump, jump back into here, refresh this, and with one finger, I tap. We can see touch list has inside of it. The length is one, and the first thing inside of here is a touch. So it's a touch list object. EV.touches was a touch list object, and inside of it there was an array where we had item zero was a touch object, and it's going to give me client X, client Y. So that's the location within the element that I touched. Page X, page Y tells me the area, uh, sorry, the, the space within the page, the X and Y coordinates within the entire screen. Radius tells me the area that was covered by my finger when it touched. Uh, rotation angle, we're not tracking that. Uh, screen X, screen Y uh, tends to be the same as page X, page Y. Uh, we've got a little bit different screen Y. And that's because um, page Y is within the body. It's the white space right here. Screen Y, I have extra screen real estate up here. This is the Chrome within my browser and the Chrome down here at the bottom of my browser. So I've got a browser open on my phone. It has interface parts that are not part of the screen that the person is interacting with, not part of the body of the web page. Right here, page X, page Y. This is a more accurate representation of inside here where I clicked. All right, uh, target P, that was my paragraph that I was touching. So we've got target, we've got page X, page Y, and those are the things that we're going to work with most. So that is inside touch number zero. So this array of touches, this list of touches. So we can work with that changes. There's also another one called uh, changed touches, which you will be using from time to time. And we have the standard ev.type, which is going to 
There we go. Touch start. That was our type of event that we defined right here. Now, talking about these type names, um, going back to looking at web browsers that are on desktops and laptops and so on, if browsers do not support this touch start event, that's okay. This is just a string. This listener is just listening for somebody to announce that, hey, I'm a touch start event. You can create whatever ones you want. You could say, I'm going to listen for the win lottery event. And when that happens, hey, look out. Now, this isn't going to happen on my laptop, on my phone, on my tablet. This event doesn't exist yet. I'm going to do another video about creating custom events, but for now, this one does not exist. So there's no code. This function is never going to be called as a result of this event. I can put touch end because touch end is an event. Refresh this. I tap with one finger. There we go. The touch start, the touch end, both of them fired. Now, if I take two fingers and I touch, there we go. So, touch list, touch list for touch start. This is the first finger, this is the second finger. So, the length was one and then it was two. You can see it got called twice because one finger, two finger. Touch list for end. The first one ended, so I'm left with a length of one. And then when the second finger left, I'm down to a length of zero. So that's what's happening with the touch end. Okay, and then touch move. That is the uh, uh, touch cancel. Usually happens, some other process cancels out. There's another event that interacts with your browser and says, okay, forget about the touch thing that you were doing. We're doing something else. Touch cancel gets fired. Uh, touch move. If I do that one, this is the one that's going to get called again and again and again and again. Uh, as you move your finger around. So I touch with one finger, there's the touch start, and oh, come on, I'm selecting text there. There we go. I'm moving my finger around without selecting text, and you can see I got a very long list of touch move events going. And these numbers here are changing. So 129, 376, the one before it. 129, 376, 129, 376, there we go. So 129 from 132 and 383, 376. So there was a, a movement in the X direction of about three pixels and a movement in the Y direction of about seven pixels. So Touch move fires constantly again and again and again. And we can combine all of these events. As I was saying earlier, the touch start, touch end, touch move, these are the things where you call functions, and inside these functions, this is how we would figure out, okay, how much has this moved? Is this going to be a swipe? Am I moving just in the x direction or just in the y direction? Moving in the y direction and tracking that with touch start, touch move is probably not something you want to do because there's a default behavior in browsers to move the page up and down, to reload the page when you're swiping in that, in that y direction, the top to bottom. So left to right, sure. Create your own swipe left, swipe right events. And we can use those by just tapping into the no pun intended, tapping into the touch start, touch end, touch move, we can track how far the person's finger has moved. We can look at timestamps to see how long it took them. Are they slowly dragging their finger across the screen? Maybe they're touching the screen as they're reading, or they're trying to pan a little bit left or right, or is it a quick little swipe, a swiping motion? So pan and swipe, those are two different types of events. And you can use the difference between timestamps to decide whether or not you are moving left, moving right with a pan or a swipe. All right, so I hope that's helped, cleared up some of the confusion about what is a touch event, what's not. Um, I will leave a note here about the things that are not touch events, and I will create a code just so that you have that. Um, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.